If you're not familiar with what La Chuzza is, it was explained to me by my grandmother as a human-sized owl that has wings of great length and a human face. When I was little, at a barbecue with my family, the discussion of it came up amongst the adults and they were all telling about their experiences, if any. My dad was talking about how he saw it when he was younger, working at Pizza Hut, on a telephone wire and in broad daylight. When he was younger, it got me really curious that they were really talking about it. I asked my grandmother about it and she explained what it was. And she has a theory of why each of our family members see the lechuza. It kept me thinking, when was it my turn to see it? The theory is that my uncle, who is a witch doctor, is the one who was sending this foul being to our side of the family. The only reason why I don't believe that is because my dad told me before my uncle and he arrived to perform an exorcism. My uncle told him that everything he does is fake and whatever you do, try not to laugh. But boy, is that exorcism a whole other story. It put my uncle in his place. But hey, I don't know. But my family never accepts any gifts and keeps away from my grandfather's side of the family. Anyway, my first experience with the La Chuzza was at my grandparents' house. Once again, we were having a barbecue. It was my grandparents, my dad, my two uncles, and my sister and I. Everything was going well. Lots of food and drinks, until my dad sternly looked at my sister and I and told us to go inside right now. As a young kid, I protested and asked why. But my dad kept walking towards me and you used his body to push me inside the house and just kept on telling me to go inside right now. As all this was going on, I could hear my grandmother yelling for salt and pepper, confusing me like, why in the hell do you need that? And why does she sound so angry? The whole family went inside as my grandmother threw salt and pepper at the lechuza, cursing it out in Spanish. Apparently, that is what she was told on how to deal with it. As my grandmother was fighting the good fight, we were all huddled in the kitchen looking through the window at her, and everyone was pointing at the tree where the bird was and freaking out. Now that I was safe, my dad told me what was going on and was pointing at the tree, but unfortunately, I was too short and couldn't see over the counter through the window and just blew it off. I was more concerned about when I was going to be able to go back outside. But after 10 or 15 minutes, I suppose, my grandma came back and said it was gone and the recreations continued. The second experience was when I grew a bit older. I was probably about 16 or 17 years old. So what happened was I was in my little GMC Sonoma with what was then my girlfriend and now my wife, parked inside her mom's apartment complex. The mom didn't really like me and still doesn't. So we had to just hang out in the truck we're sitting there listening to music and talking all night as usual in that damn truck. We both have the windows down because we're smoking a cigarette and we heard the strangest sound coming from a crowded area of trees. To this day, I cannot explain or mimic the sound it made. Sometimes I just sit and think about it and like an idiot, try to make the sounds it made. But it was such a creepy weird sound, it made me and my girlfriend sick to our stomachs. We were struck with fear, we haven't even seen the thing yet, and my girlfriend ends up opening her door and starts vomiting. I also feel like vomiting, but I refuse to vomit. I'm a little baby and I'll fight it. I start rubbing her back as she's throwing up, and I'm looking out of the car trying to find what's making that noise. Until finally, I spot a massive bird-like figure perched on a tree, but only for about two or three seconds. And I see it spread its wings, and jump out the opposite side of the tree where I couldn't see. That was a wrap for the night. I walked her to her door to make sure she got home safely and I had the luxury of driving myself back home. When I was in elementary, I remember staying up many nights staring at this shadow through my open door in the hallway. It was weird because the shadow would turn from a little girl in what looked like a dress and those see-through things brides used to cover their face. Then it would change to what looks like a taller man wearing a hat. 
It was like she was following me anywhere I went. Because when I saw the shadows, it was in my own home. But when I first got the real glimpse of her, it was my grandparents' home. Once again, when I was younger and elementary, my grandparents just picked me up from school and I was hanging out at their house. I was in the guest room playing my PlayStation when I saw through the glare of the TV, looking out the window, their dog Cinnamon was jumping around trying to bite something. I brushed it off but did a double take and actually started and saw a little girl jumping around holding a dress in both hands, trying to get away from the dog as it kept on snipping at her. Oh my god, that made my heart stop. I ran out of the room and hung out around my grandparents. I didn't tell them anything because they're not very superstitious, but neither was I until you have the proof right in front of your face. The next encounter is debatable. I debate myself on this all the time because it was just a dream. So it's not like I think about this little girl all the time and always looking over my shoulder so I don't know why I had this dream. It felt so real. I was in my grandparents' house's living room and I saw the little girl standing in the middle of the room. I got up from the sofa and started walking towards her but for some reason I wasn't scared. As I got closer I could see her face better and it was really wrinkly and brown but I still for some reason was not scared. She was just staring at me, didn't say a word and lifted up her right hand where she was holding a leaf and it was really bright and had like a golden starry atmosphere around it. Normally the stuff would freak me out but in the dream I reached for the leaf that she was handing me and once I touched it, I woke up. The last thing that ties this whole thing together with this little girl is that my mom has dealt with her as well. But the extra weird thing is that I never met my mom until I was either 16 or 17 years old and I knew nothing about her. But when we finally met one day, we got into the discussion of the supernatural and I never told her my stories about the little girl but she told me a story of her seeing and describing the same little girl I've been seeing my whole childhood. Her story in short was that when she was younger, like in elementary, she was with her parents looking at a new apartment. And while her parents were busy looking at the apartment, she wandered off and started playing with some little girl in another vacant apartment. She said they were playing hide and seek and tag, but when her parents got pissed at her for running off, she told them that she was playing with this little girl in the apartment. So they looked in the apartment, but nobody was there. So yeah, I didn't know. I was really skeptical about me being a paranoid crazy person until my mom confirmed what I've been seeing. Storywood. That was the name of the street where I lived from first grade to I think ninth. I remember the first year in the house. Everything was fine. Normal living and just enjoying the new house. Until the following year, on my older sister's birthday. My sister didn't get the present she expected that day at her sleepover and birthday party. For some unknown reason, my father thought it'd be a good idea to buy a Ouija board, which we played that night. The setting is in my living room. Lights off, except a lamp. My dad opens up the Ouija board while my sister and her friends and I sit in a circle, wondering what the heck kind of board game this is. My dad explained the game and we played. I believe this was when it all started, a series of haunted events. After using the board, once we put it in a hallway closet, covering it with blankets and pretended it wasn't there. When we played the first time, nothing crazy happened. My sister and I just felt uneasy about it. Sucked too, because the VHS tapes were in that closet and we were terrified to open it and snatch a movie. Oh, and the great thing was that it was closer to my room right by my door. I remember night after night laying in my bed with my door open and by the closet I'd see shadows casting from a candle in the hallway. These shadows were changing from what looked like a tall man with a hat on, like a police formal hat. And it would shrink down to what looked like a little girl in a dress and veil. Every night I'd stare at it, praying to God everything would be okay. Everything was, but then things got weirder in the years to come. It's embarrassing, but this happened while I was on the toilet. So there I was, doing what I do best on the toilet, and out of nowhere, a shampoo bottle falls from the tub, and I hear hard stomping on the roof, followed by chains rattling. I freaked out, 
and the stomping continues for about three more seconds as the white rough paint falls from the ceiling. I quickly got decent and ran from my first stepmom's room, heart pounding, and asked if my dad was on the roof. I expected a yes. I got a no. I kept challenging her, trying to get her to admit they're messing with me. I looked for our only vehicle outside. Gone. Weird. Once, in the middle of the night, my dad and I awoke to screaming and crying from my sister. When my dad got there first, she was in the fetal position under our table, crying and pointing toward the living room. She said my great-grandmother was standing there. She's dead. After a couple of minutes, she said she was gone. Turns out, she had her first asthma attack while she was sleeping and she woke up seeing my great-grandma, shaking her to wake up. That's why she had the whole freak out. Maybe she was trying to help her. I remember my punching bag swinging by itself when we would come home and I obviously, no one was there. I remember the heavy feeling in that house. Things got bad in that house. I blame my dad for one, bringing the Ouija board in our life and two, for being a child molester. I'm not excusing his responsibility for what he did. I don't talk to him anymore, but I think that house had something to do with it because as soon as he was arrested, he was gone. I finally walked through the house and I don't feel anything like it felt like when I was in the first grade. I didn't even realize it till like third visit there to mow the lawn for the tenant. It's peaceful now. So about a year ago at school, I had a weird and possibly unexplainable experience. I was sleeping in my dormitory. I slept opposite to the door. Next to me was a whole row of bunk beds. Bunk beds opposite to and the same thing opposite to me. We slept in, so having cold nights and people getting in and out was frankly common, and I didn't mind. I would often close the door and go back to sleep, or I'd ask my friends. We were using bunk beds, and everything was normal and the nights went as usual. One day, I was sleeping and all of a sudden, my eyes just opened. I couldn't really explain why, but my body was acting like it was in a flight or fight mode. I calmed down and looked around, and then I saw a tall, dark figure. He was standing next to my bed and he was just standing there, breathing heavily. Then he sat on my bed. He looked at me breathing even more heavily, and it was getting closer and closer to my face but I couldn't make out the details. But what I could make out is that his breath smelled like one of my friend's morning breath, who I'll call Resler for privacy reasons. So I told the figure, thinking it was my friend, to cut it out. The figure looked surprised and looked at me for a while. It stopped as it retracted its face from mine and stood up and climbed on my bunk bait's bed, who I'll call Phelan for the same reasons. The next morning when we were woken up and told to make our beds, I asked Resler if he was the one who did that late at night. He said he was sleeping and he doesn't really like bothering his sleep just for a petty prank. I believed him and I asked Phil and whether he was the one who did it since the figure climbed up to his bed. He said he didn't do anything the previous night because he was dead asleep and he doesn't like wasting his time on such useless matters like that. I made the conclusion that it was sleep paralysis but the thing is I could move my body during that experience and I could talk while having that experience, and I could feel nothing really changed, and I could move my body if I wanted to. I wasn't really satisfied with their answer, and asked around the entire dorm, asking people left and right if they had done it, but knowing I was strict time for waking up, they said they don't really do those things, and even if they did, they would do it while some people were still awake, so when they do it, everyone could have a laugh or two. I even went as far as to ask people from the neighboring dorm if they did it, but to no avail. So I just gave up on it and forgot about it. Until another night where I was sleeping as usual and in our dorm since I was near to the door opposite to me where some of the dorm mates that I knew. On this day, I woke up again with the same sense of fight or flight mode and I saw a tall dark figure looking at the people who were sleeping at the top bunk. Then. The guy who was sleeping on the left rolled to the right, where he was looking, but it looked like he wasn't even awake. He was closing his eyes. The figure looked on the top bunker on the right and he bends down to look at the guy who was sleeping at the bottom bunk on the left. 
I thought it was the bunkmate on the right who was just checking in on them. When I raised up my head to get a clear picture, he disappeared. The next morning I asked him about it. He said he was sleeping and he doesn't remember doing anything like that. And so we spread the word around that a demon or even a person might be doing this. And the whole dorm was on alert to keep ourselves safe. The dorm started a whole religious phase where every night someone prays for the entire dorm and everyone recites the Lord's Prayer and goes to sleep. It seemed like it was successful because no one reported seeing it ever again. However, this year, a few months back in January, February, two of my friends reported seeing a tall, dark figure watching them. He was just standing there breathing heavily. One of them was sleeping at the top bunk and he said he could literally see no face. He was so terrified, he just covered himself with the blanket over his head. While my other friend reported just seeing his legs and he said they looked abnormal and he could just hear it breathing and standing there. They waited for a while and he disappeared. Again, the word spread and the dorm did the religious phase again and it seemed effective again. But there was a final sighting at a nearby dorm. My friend who stays in that dorm and who's a religious guy reported seeing a figure walking slowly to him. He reported seeing it as a tall, dark figure that looked like it was a pyramid for a head. He said he saw it in the outline of it. I told him to swear on the Bible that he was saying the truth. And since he doesn't take that kind of swearing as a joke, he sweared he also reported that when he locked eyes with it, it stood like a statue, not moving an inch. Since he was scared of it, he closed his eyes and put his blanket over his head. And ever since that night, he's been praying even more and got more religious. Never cited that thing ever since. Can someone possibly explain this? Aliens. I saw a man in public once who was almost fully dressed, with the only exception being his hands and face, but he was wearing sunglasses. It was a hot day, so him having such an amount and thick clothing on was weird. However, the clothing wasn't baggy. What was strange to me was his arms were extremely long compared to the rest of his body and looked like his elbows bent the other way. Like if he was to get his arm naturally, his hand could easily touch his shoulder blade. A way to describe this man's proportions is, open an editing program and get an image of a six foot man then squish the image in on itself, slightly from the sides. Doesn't grow in height, but becomes unnaturally thin. Tic tac looking head, etc. But edit his arms to look unnaturally long. Think how Sonic character's arms look, almost touching the floor from the tips of their fingers. He was interacting somewhat with his surroundings and people did notice him there, swerved around to get past him. But nobody noticed how oddly dressed or how long his arms were. Looked about 30. Another time was when I looked out of my bedroom window. Saw a weird looking shape in the sky one time, about dusk. Think the Triforce from The Legend of Zelda. Three triangular shapes where each point had a blue white glowing orb on it. Nine glowing orbs in total as the triangles didn't meet, leaving way for all nine glowing orbs. The triangles were faintly outlined with lines. I tried getting a photo of it on my DS as I had no mobile at the time, but the quality was too poor to even bother with it. It hovered around the place for about 10-ish minutes before vanishing into thin air after I looked away for a second or so. Unexplainable. I encountered a weird woman. She was telling me about demons and the sort. That night, I fell asleep all right, but woke up to hearing howling in the distance. It wasn't one of our or nearby dogs and didn't sound like an animal either, somewhat human. Fell asleep as I didn't think much of it and woke up to a black room, yet the lights were still on. Like if someone put a sheet of black plastic over my eyes, but you could still barely see through it. My eyes were fully opened and I could sit up and move about all right, as I needed the restroom. Went back asleep and woke up at about twilight. The most heaviest thing felt like it was pressing down on my chest, like an elephant calf was sitting on it. I closed my eyes and heard that howling noise again, but felt like it was coming from on top of me. It was loud and sent me into a panic. I saw the woman again a week later and the first thing she said was, did you hear the howling too? And told me she went through something similar. 
She was in her 40s and I was 16 or 17 at the time. Saw some goat man humanoid figures when I was in a forest on a trip to primary school. It wasn't Halloween either, and his body proportions looked too good to be cosplay. His, his legs bent in the natural deer goat looking way, and I know this illusion can be pulled off decently well. If you look at fursuits, but this was bent so much that it couldn't have been a cosplay suit. His arms looked overly hairy and he had little stubs as horns. He was in the forest, sitting on a rock with a cloak on. I started looking at him, then I noticed him standing up to take his cloak off. He wasn't wearing anything and his body was human-like but cut off to goat legs at his belly button section. His feet looked part human, part hoof. His face looked more diamond shaped, akin to a goat but still had human-esque features like normal eyes, mouth, nose by what I could tell. This was not a part of the experience of the trip as we went to do bird watching and to collect leaves and acorns for a school project. Nobody else as far as I'm aware saw it and I'm not in contact with anybody from primary school to even ask. Recently, on the bus home from college, I saw a flying figure in the sky. It wasn't a bird or any kind of flying machine like helicopter or drone etc. It looked similar to the Grim Reaper with his scythe. Torn up, clacked, ghostly looking thing. I'd say about 200 feet up in the air. Just flying there, not fast. Just talking about pretty much. Not doing anything. Just like what he does as a hobby to relax yourself in his pastime. I saw him for about 10 minutes as there was a road blockage due to a car slash van crash. I overheard people speaking to each other about the crash a few days later and one of them said, yep, both drivers died as well as a passenger in the van. I once saw a white blonde woman on their laptop minding their own business at a cafe. I was outside waiting for someone and looked around and then looked back into the cafe and where that woman was sitting, a black man was sitting there now. Shaved head, bearded with glasses on. The same laptop, cup of drink was in the same place. I thought nothing of it as she could have left and he took the spot. Three minutes later, the person changed again. This time he looked like an Indian, shaved man with long hair and an ear piercing. I never saw a white woman or black man walk out of the coffee shop and there was only one exit. So I've just moved in with my boyfriend's grandparents' house while they're in Florida because we're waiting to close on a house we're getting. Before, we were doing long distance and I visited him there. During the visit, there were multiple times that I felt terrified, but I believe that the order is very important, so I'm going to try and lay it out chronologically. First visit, two weeks day. My boyfriend shows me the basement, and we're walking around together and it feels off and creepy, and I think we're being watched. But it's a basement. I try to think nothing about it. The basement continues to feel a terrible line for the first time and steps into the basement and immediately feels terrified. Have a panic attack, but chalk it up to not living in a place with a basement in a while. I've decided I'm just afraid of basements now, I guess. I randomly wake up in the middle of the night with this terrible feeling that someone is standing in the room watching us. I've never felt something like that before. And I woke up my boyfriend saying that someone is in the room watching us. I eventually fell back asleep. The basement continues to feel terrible every time I do laundry and I run when down there. There's a specific corner I never visit and do not want to, so I just ignore it. The visit ends. The move in, three months later and a bit more permanently. I walk into the place and still feel weird like before, but I just yell out, I'm back ghosties, as my boyfriend and I made a joke of it. The basement continues to feel terrible but I need to do laundry, so I suck it up. My boyfriend finally introduces me to the corner I was afraid to go into. Turns out it's a corner that turns into a smaller room with antique furniture and figurines. I like the furniture, it's cute. We sit on the couch and the basement becomes something a lot more manageable. I go into the basement a couple days later and it feels completely fine. I'm very surprised, it even feels brighter. And I finally feel more at ease in the house. My boyfriend and I make a couple of ghost related jokes. 
That night, I woke up to a small pinch at my side. It wasn't malicious and it was playful, but it freaked me out. At the time, even though it was scary, I thought the pinch was almost playful, but as everything got scarier, I'm starting to think it was more condescending. Anyway, I physically felt it, that's for sure, but it wasn't on the side that my boyfriend was. I freak out a bit, wake him up, but fall back to sleep. The blinds to one of the windows were open in the bedroom. Blinds that I thought about several times opening but kept forgetting. They were just randomly open. My boyfriend said he didn't open them, but that I did and probably forgot. I know 100% that I didn't. I begin to have incredibly scary dreams, all taking place in the house and all include the same deafening loud buzzing noise. Now I'm waking up screaming and kicking and my boyfriend and I are getting no sleep. Soon, everywhere in the house, daytime or nighttime, I feel like someone is watching and following me around the house. No matter where I go, it's especially intense in the bathroom and bedroom. I haven't been in the basement, too scared to. Like someone is breathing over my shoulder. I first begin to think the nightmares are just scaring me and I'm afraid to be alone. As I feel better when my boyfriend gets home, but now, at around 9 p.m. even when he's right next to me, I feel an awful feeling of being followed and watched. All of this is coming from the hallway towards the bedroom and bathroom. There were even more chills than usual, as the house was always cold. When in bed, I felt a cold breeze hitting the back of my neck, but my back was to the window, so I turned around. That same cold breeze continued to hit my neck at the exact same spot, even though the window wasn't behind me anymore. This is consistent most nights, and in the shower, when the feeling of being afraid of the bathroom was at its peak, a strong breeze blew in and hit the back of my neck only. The door was open a tad bit, but no windows were open and I don't think it's possible for there to be that strong of a breeze from another room. I just wanted to ask if this sounds like something to worry about. I had to leave the house and go to a relative's house. It's seriously messing with my head. I was thinking that something was in the basement and has followed me upstairs because I've been giving it so much attention. However, I do have anxiety and I am bipolar, so I'm also worried it might just be my own head doing crazy things, as it's known to do that. This story gives me chills whenever I tell it. I was 13 when I first experienced paranormal activity in my house. I was taking a bath and then suddenly the door opened. I saw a black shadow as the curtains. After about three seconds, all of the combs in my bathroom got thrown at me. The bathtub curtains were the reason I didn't get hit. I called for my parents' help because I was terrified, but the only thing they did was ask me, why are all the combs on the floor? This happened two more times. Nothing else happened for about four more months. I was home after English lessons with my parents. I asked if I could start walking faster because I needed to pee. And they said, sure, go ahead. We'll be home in about five minutes. Once I got home, I peed and opened my PC to watch some videos. That's when I heard it. My mom was calling my name, but something wasn't feeling right. I didn't answer and she just kept on calling. George, George, come here, George. I have something to show you. I'm literally crying right now. I called my mother and asked her if she was home already and she answered that she ran into some friends and that they were drinking a coffee. I said, okay, see you later, thinking of what that voice could have been. Fortunately, it stopped right after I hung up. Nothing else happened for two years. The last paranormal thing that happened was one month ago. It was midnight and I was trying to get some sleep. My cat has the tendency to scratch my door at night, so I opened the door for her. Well, this time it was different. The scratching, was way more aggressive. And after about 10 minutes of me not saying anything or opening the door, she started hitting her head against the door for 20 minutes straight. The next day she was acting normal and didn't have any injuries on her head. Guys, I'm fucking terrified. Nothing has happened since then, but something is very wrong about my house. What do I do? Sometimes during psychosis, people experience unexplainable things. 
in many cases of psychosis, there's nothing paranormal going on. It's just textbook psychosis of specific and commonly experienced hallucinations and paranoia and delusions. But in some cases of psychosis, there are things seen or heard that I think could be cases of the veil between the natural and supernatural paranormal being lifted. I think sometimes the eyes are open to the spirit realm. This is certainly the case with psychedelics and hallucinogens. When one takes enough, especially with ones like DMT or ayahuasca, they have a profound out-of-body experience where they interact with entities from the spirit realm. Some people identify these as angels, fairies, intergalactic aliens, gnomes, lizards, demons, or a whole host of other shape-shifting creatures or forms of intelligence. Satan is evidently able to shape-shift. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11.14 It's a whole lot easier to believe that there's nothing special happening during a psychotic break, whether it's induced by a chemical imbalance due to something like schizophrenia, or a change in perception caused by the introduction of a substance to the brain. It's a lot easier to write it all off as not real. The medical community cannot explain some of the phenomena and therefore writes it off as not real. Does anyone else think that there's something bigger going on that most people are not aware of because of the doors of their perception? Last Halloween, I had a crazy psychotic break where I witnessed some of the ordinary and classic hallucinations, seeing cameras but also saw hundreds of demons and some other pretty wild stuff that I can't explain, like people turning invisible and walking through a wall. Some would explain this as the infamous shadow people or ghosts or jinn. I'm still, not, still trying to make sense of everything I saw, particularly those wispy, airy, ghost-like people, and have a difficult time of writing it off as a hallucination. Because when I was in rehab, this Luciferian guy, someone who worshipped worshipped Lucifer or Satan, told me, without knowing about my experience, that he used to get caught for stealing, but then he was turned onto Santa Muerte, the god of the cartel, who grants various powers, one of which is the ability to turn invisible. After praying to this god, he was supposedly able to turn invisible for a time and steal without getting caught. Just like I believe that through the power of God, the Holy Spirit and Jesus, People have been supernaturally healed and even raised from the dead. Satan, Lucifer demons also has powers to be able to heal, prophecy like fortune telling and perform many other miraculous signs. The light is greater than the darkness and Satan's power is incredibly small compared to God. who can do anything. And the battle against good and evil has already been won. But until Jesus returns and brings about the new heaven and new earth, Satan still has some powers that is used to deceive and or torment as many as possible until his time is up. So in recap, I'm strongly considering the idea that in some cases of psychosis, what is actually happening is that their eyes are being opened to the spirit realm and they're seeing unseen realities because the veil between the natural and the supernatural paranormal has been partially and temporarily lifted. One example of the other side of this reality where someone was given a glimpse into the good side in the spirit realm was in 2 Kings 6.27. And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened his servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. When I was a child, about six or seven at my best guess. I lived in a haunted house. The owner's mother died there and there were rumors that it was used as a drug den before the owner started renting it out. Anyhow, I used to see a gown float by the doorway and I would also have very demonic dreams. Two incidents stand out as potentially demonic to me. Once, when I was lying down to sleep, I heard a commanding deep voice say, there's somebody in the house. That's it, no follow up. Nothing else. I've never had another incident like that in my entire life. The second incident was one night I woke up out of a deep sleep and saw a face on the ceiling. I drew it for my mother and she had me checked out. I was fine. So she instead had the house blessed. Never had an issue since. Fast forward until about two and a half years ago 
when my first daughter was about to be born. For about two months, I had a recurring nightmare where a tall man in a black hat, sort of like a top hat but misshapen, would stand at the foot of the bed and watch me. Upon waking, I would have sleep paralysis for a few seconds. In those moments, I could still see and feel him. My wife would often wake me up, claiming I was screaming, No! Who are you? Or other times, just mumbling. After my daughter was born, I only had one other incident. I was rocking her back to sleep in her crib, and I saw my wife open the door a crack and stand by it, looking in. I asked her to come in, but she didn't move. I said, babe? Nothing. At the same time, I went to the door to open it all the way. I heard her groggy voice from the adjacent bedroom, our room, say, Huh? What? I'll never forget it. Exactly how it sounded and everything. As the door opened, I had a flash of just a white void where a face would be, along with the rest of what I can only describe as a figure exactly as tall as I am. It vanished in a moment, and I ran to my bedroom and sat in bed with my daughter. Every single hair on my arms and neck stood straight up, and I've never felt anything so terrifying since. Everything has been fine since that event for years. Here and there, random things will happen. I had a buddy stay at my house one night when my wife and daughter were with her sister, visiting her grandfather. And he said he was awoken in the early morning by two male voices discussing something. He asked if I had somebody come to the door in the middle of the night, and I hadn't. But other than that, nothing too out there. That said, in our most recent home, about three months ago, my daughter began experiencing night terrors. I had them as a kid, and they're truly heartbreaking. The only thing I can do is hold her arms and head still so she doesn't hurt herself. She'll scream at me, growl, hit me, throw herself around, the whole works. Everything I've read said they don't remember for them the next day, and they're asleep for the whole thing. It's heartbreaking, but it makes me feel better knowing she doesn't remember the incidents. Anyway, around the same time this started, things started moving around in the house. We'll hear cabinets open and shut. He has something thump or bang, and I've even seen shadow figures hiding around walls as I walk past. One night, while reading to her, she and I both witnessed a sock move itself across her bedroom floor. I know she saw it too, because when I walked her by the spot on the floor to get her out of the room, she stopped and looked down at it, clearly puzzled. I tried to play it off to her, and my wife and I chalked it up to air currents. Yeah, right. I saged the home immediately after, and I've been trying to keep everyone's minds off of it. However, it's getting worse. My daughter's waking up in the middle of the night screaming, no, or mine. Sometimes she seems like she's having a conversation with someone, but when we go in to investigate, obviously nothing is there and she's fast asleep. Last night, something happened on the monitor that I couldn't explain. I took a photo of it, but unfortunately I have no way to share them here. For about 30 seconds, I could see a large shadowy head behind my daughter on the monitor. I took a photo of it on my phone to send to my buddy to see what he thought. Wife was asleep at this point with our four month old. When I checked the monitor again, it was gone. To me, it was clear as day. And although he says he sees it, he thinks it could just be a shadow. Anyhow, I'm at my wits end. I'm terrified that I've harbored something all these years from my childhood and now it's planned to torment my daughter. Does anyone have any experience with this or any advice? Anything at all, I'll take it. I thought the saging would help, but it almost seemed to tick it off and made things worse. So let me start by saying, my trailer is slightly tilted down to the left when looking at it front facing. My bedroom is on the left side of the house, and I'm facing the same way as you would look at my house on my TV in my bedroom, which is probably the most tilted part of the house. Now this is not by very much, but it can be noticed in the supporting wall on the outside, underneath my bathroom which was on the very end of the left side of the house, as it had small cracks and settling for as long as I can remember. I will also say, the house has been settled since I moved in, as far as I can tell. There are only two taut straps underneath actually grounding it, and the wind does seem to rock the house slightly in very severe storms. 
same with very close lightning strikes, but seemingly no short-term issues, from a normal standpoint. That being said, this 8 cube dresser is sideways, so 2 cubes tall and 4 cubes long, with a 55 inch Samsung TV, wired speaker system and my switch on it that's all moving. It's in the direction that the house is tilted, but it's never noticeable until it's like, whoa. But I have my phone chargers in between this cube stand and another six cube I have with a desktop to hold my PC and second monitor. And every night I plug in my phones and set my alarms, etc. I never see a big difference in the placement of the TV stand. But I just went out to my refrigerator to get a soda and came back and I swear it was off noticeably by about 10 inches. Like it had to have been pulled towards my closet and I would have noticed any other time it was off, even close to how bad it was. Like there was a giant gap between the two cubes, but it's like nothing it really disturbed on the cube dresser. And no other furniture moves aside from that. I use a leather futon with a soft shag on top of it as a bed and sofa. And so it has small round legs instead of big thick legs, etc. That causes the legs to put spots in the carpet, where you can tell it's been there before. Well, I haven't moved the futon in a while, and I don't think it can even move itself because of the dug-in spots, disallowing it to slide anywhere. But it's like how I sit and put my legs through one of the cubes. Nothing makes sense. It's like when the TV stands moves. The futon where I sit is still aligned with the cube I put my feet through. But there's no visible sign that the futon itself moves, just the TV stand. But of course, when I fix the TV stand, I have to move the futon so it lines up right. My last thing is that very rarely I'll lay down and feel like there's small earthquakes. Like very small, so much so that everything would just seem like it's still. But as soon as I lay to rest, my body, I can feel them inside my body. And when it happens, I immediately grab my phone and look at the local earthquakes, etc. But nothing comes up. I've had thoughts that the house is above a ticking time bomb sinkhole, and it's only a matter of time. But I've lived here for six years. And I had the earthquake feeling like a week ago, but it didn't happen last night, before today when my dresser moved. There's all sorts of actually unexplainable stuff that happens to me, especially like how fluid and in control of my life I actually am but also how everything in my life happens perfectly coincidentally, especially when it's stuff not in my control and I have no chance of coming across it till the circumstance, but it always works out in my favor. That is to say, as if there is otherworldly influence based on what I expect to happen, multiple timelines, etc. I also have insane dreams of which I mostly lucid dream, but have the every six month plus case of sleep paralysis, etc and feel like it's all connected. This is the third time the dresser has moved in such a noticeable fashion, in such a short amount of me being gone. And I found similar results on here through multiple Google searches, so figured I'd post here. I know for a fact I'm sane. I'm a literal and very logical thinker. That's what fuels my fear of the unknown being the only fear that I have. Though that expends to the dark and water, etc. of course. So I work as an assistant in nursing, AIN, called a CNA in America. I work night shifts through an agency, meaning I work at all kinds of facilities and places, not just at one place. I was at an aged care facility, nursing home, upstairs down one corridor with another AIN, an RN and two residents. They had just had a fight as one had dementia and tried to go into the other's room at a bit past three in the morning. I understand for reference, we were standing about two thirds down the hallway, which was fairly lit until halfway down, so the corridors aren't too bright. We have enough light on so we can see everything to the end clearly, but not enough to disturb people. At the end of the hallway, there are two rooms opposite each other. The one on the right being empty, as the previous resident had passed away a few months ago. As the three of us are trying to diffuse the situation and get them into their rooms, I'm standing with my back to the wall, standing between the residents while the other two talk to the residents about the situation. I get this weird feeling like something isn't quite right. 
Looking back on it now, I realise it felt like I was being watched for somewhere down the end of the corridor. An instinctive feeling. So I look over and that's when I see it. A brief flash of movement. I saw a black shadow figure run from left to right between the two rooms at the end of the corridor. No colour, not transparent and definitely not a person. Although it was of the shape of a tall man. I only saw her for a second though because as soon as it entered the darkness again of the room, it disappeared. I felt my whole body go numb. I'd had weird experiences I couldn't quite explain before, but never anything like this. We finished dealing with the situation and got them both back to bed and went to sit in the nurse's station. Once the RN left, I spoke to my coworker, a lady I've worked with plenty of times before, and we have a mutual trust and understanding. She also has a very confident demeanor of no bullshit. After a while, I started to realize what it was I could have been looking at and I was getting increasingly disturbed. We eventually got to the topic of creepy things we've experienced on night shifts and were talking about our stories, hearing things we can't explain, buzzers going off for empty rooms, things being moved or buzzers being turned off, when the residents in the rooms most definitely can't do it themselves. After a bit, I explain what I saw earlier in the night to her and she just stops, looks at me with a serious face and tells me to again describe the figure as best I can. A tall, shadow figure, no distinct features, shape of a tall man. Her smile faded quickly and she paused for a minute, taking a deep breath before explaining that I'm not the first to see him. A few of the night staff in that wing had seen him, including herself, and they think it's the resident who died in that end room, as he fits a description. This resident was also incredibly protective over one of the ladies down the hall a bit, as they thought he was in love with her, and she was quite gentle and frail. She told me of the time she went to check on this lady after her buzzer went off, but as she walked in, it had already been turned off. This was for a resident who was almost entirely immobile now, and couldn't reach the off button herself. As she walked in, a bit back from the foot of the bed was the same shadow figure standing facing the door, waiting for her to come in and watch her. She checked if the resident looked okay and ran out of the room. It barely moved, but it turned slightly so as to keep watching her at all times. She got a co-worker to check the room and nothing was there when they both went back. We then decided to check the end room it ran into earlier and nothing. The only thing out of the ordinary was the wardrobe doors were wide open, as well as the bathroom door, both with the locks somehow still engaged and working. I should also mention, these are normally kept locked when the room is vacant, so to stop wandering residents from going in and hiding or getting lost. But what we did notice was that the room felt abnormally cold and had a very dark feeling. I've been back to work there several times since and that room is still empty and still has the same feeling in it. I've heard some strange things down there too, but nothing that you couldn't make up a decent explanation for. Great place to work, but I'll never go down there alone again. We're also pretty sure that he stays around to watch over her and protect her, like he did before he passed. But I can't get over the overwhelming darkness you feel in that room. So recently, a couple of months ago, I moved into a new place. I've always been a paranoid and scaredy cat kind of person, but I've never really experienced anything major since I was a kid. When I first moved into my new place, I noticed right away that I felt very safe in my new room, which was nice because with my previous place, I always felt unnerved and scared all the time. But recently, I've been waking up multiple times at night for no reason. Usually, I'm a pretty heavy sleeper and rarely wake up in the middle of the night. I've been having some pretty messed up dreams and my anxiety level has been a lot higher than usual. I always see shadows out of the corner of my eye, but I always kind of played that off as the dim lighting in the house. That being said, the current house I'm living in is about 100 years old. Two nights ago, when I woke up in the middle of the night, I saw a shadow near my mirror that looked to be in the shape of a man. When I woke up again later, I saw the same shape of a man sitting on my couch, which is across from my mirror. Last night, I woke up and the man was standing closer to my bed. 
I didn't really see his face, but it almost looked like he was wearing an old t-shirt and he was quite skinny. Fortunately, I didn't have any weird dreams last night, but one thing I noticed was I experienced more when I was alone. I thought maybe I'd play it off as this weird shadow I saw when I was a kid, but for some reason, I feel like this thing is a lot friendlier. It doesn't feel as though it had bad intentions, just trying to make itself known possibly. When I was a kid and just moved into my foster home, I used to see the shadow man in my room who always wore a hat and would watch me sleep in the corner of my room. I'd always wake up and would see him sitting or standing there watching me. Let me start by saying that I'm not a big paranormal believer. As a matter of fact, this might piss some of you off, but I wouldn't really say I believe in the paranormal to begin with. I'm the kind of person who looks for the logical explanation when something strange happens. However, yesterday I experienced something that left me wondering. Is there even a logical explanation? I visited my grandparents the other day and stayed overnight. My grandparents live in a house in a suburb with a few thousand residents in total. The residence has two floors that are connected internally. In other words, the house consists of two separate apartments. They used to rent the upstairs apartment for almost two decades. Three or four different people have lived in it over the years. Anyone? No one lives in it now. So whoever visits usually just leaves their stuff there and sleeps on the bed. There are two rooms. A small bathroom and a big room that has everything else in it. A small kitchen, a small dining area and a bedroom. Basically two sofa beds next to the kitchen. It isn't the ideal apartment, but it's fine for a couple of days. Me and my brother came back from a night out, it was about 3am, and started chatting a bit. After an hour or so, my brother started getting ready to go to sleep. He eventually fell asleep at around 4.15. It was a very quiet night. No wind, no noise, no nothing. Half an hour later, at approximately 5am, I heard a noise. It sounded like a heavy step, like someone kicked the ground outside the door. Moments later, I started hearing what sounded like a heavy person dancing hysterically right outside the apartment. I froze. I've never experienced a sound similar to this. The only sound that could be heard was that of the steps, or whatever they were, hitting the ground. My body and my brain couldn't comprehend what was happening. I switched to survival mode. I woke up my brother, who also didn't know how to react to the sound. Sound lasted about 40 seconds. It stopped abruptly and didn't occur again. What was scary was how near us it was. It sounded like it was five feet away from where we were. Sadly, my brother didn't get to listen to it for more than 10 seconds and that he had just woken up so he wasn't able to form a complete opinion on what the sound sounded like. I myself can't describe it decently. The only way I can describe it is steps. Like someone or something heavy, at least 50 kilograms, started jumping up and down hysterically and with no rhythm. My father literally thinks it was the ghost of an old tenant. He says he thinks the upstairs apartment is haunted and that's why he never sleeps in it. I don't really believe in ghosts. But I honestly can't explain that sound. As an adult, I truly dislike horror movies. Don't get me wrong, I can enjoy a thriller or mind bender, but just straight up gore or paranormal stuff gives me the willies. Just not a fan. I believe it stems from one experience in particular. When I was seven, my parents got divorced. By the time I was 11, both of my parents had remarried. I also have a sister three years younger than me. My dad had married his girlfriend who also had daughters. They were all older and always teased me for being such a scaredy cat. They'd jump out from behind doors just to watch me scream and crumple. We all had a good laugh about it, no harm done. In our condo, I had to share a room with my younger sister because the older girls needed their own rooms. One night, when I was about 12 or 13, my sister was sleeping over at a friend's house, so I finally had the room to myself. I played Xbox, stayed up late, and decided to go to bed around midnight. Once I flicked off the light, I jumped in bed and pulled the covers over me. That's when I saw her, 
out of the corner of my eye as I was rolling to my side to go to sleep. I gasped and sat upright, staring at the end of my bed. There was a woman, head hanging down like she was studying what the footboard was made of, dark hair obscuring all of her facial features except for her very fair skin. Her hands gripped the footboard just inches from my feet. My toes curled and I tried not to move. She didn't do anything. She never made a noise. She didn't reach for me. She was just there. I watched, holding my breath, unsure what to do. I didn't want her to attack me or something. I didn't want her to get out of bed for fear of disturbing her. I decided the best course of action was to call for my dad as he would know what to do. I opened my mouth in an attempt to get some words out, but nothing. My eyes were still locked on her, a chill running down my spine. Finally, my hoarse voice got out, Dad, and he didn't move. I got a bit more courage and said, Dad, and again she stayed still. Finally, I yelled, Dad, and turned towards the door, just slightly as I looked for the light to turn on outside my door. And when I realised I looked away, I quickly turned back and she was gone. My dad burst in, moments later, wondering what had happened. All I could tell him was that I had a bad dream. Needless to say, I didn't sleep much that night. I've just moved into a new house, and I'm scared. I've been living here for about a month now. It's newly constructed by a couple of years. The first couple of weeks I felt so bright and cheery, everything felt great. I got great vibes from everything about it. I felt like I'd made a great decision. Also, to preface, I do have a carbon monoxide detector. I put it on the first night. My first couple of nights sleeping here has already started. I would have auditory hallucinations right before falling asleep, which I've never had before. I would hear a whisper in my ear. The first one was, hello, how are you? And I quickly snapped awake. Then there were the sounds of yelling, people bustling around me, etc. But I quickly snap up and nobody is there. I quickly started having viv vivid nightmares every night. I don't usually have vivid dreams and haven't had nightmares in forever. It would be things like seeing the inside of my body and my heart was infested with larvae. They were squirming in and out of the tide of my blood. I'd see my house swarming with infestation. I'd be hurt, tortured and killed. My insides were usually always rotting and crawling with bugs. I shrug this off as it's just dreams, even though it's scary. In the third week, everything quickly went downhill. I decided to do a full tank change on my axolotl tank. It fell and crushed my fingers and leg. Then, I discovered a large ant infestation in the tank below it. They were so disgusting, they left a black gooey grime everywhere they were, festering in corners, crawling over one another. It made me retch and gag. I quickly went out, vacuumed, sprayed and placed traps. I was done with tank change when I noticed all of the poison ants started running to the inside of the tank below, drowning and killing themselves in it. I urgently move the fish into another tank and a pregnant black widow crawls up from the side. I spray her down and move her out. Then a mystery hole appears in the drywall. Spiders crawl out, crawl on the ceiling and jump onto me from the ceiling while I'm in bed. I have a high loft bed. Pest people have no clue what made the hole, but it keeps getting bigger. They find no termites or cause. Then I notice the fish shelf is breaking. I go out to buy a new shelf and Lowe's catches on fire while I'm in it. I leave and go wherever else I can find a new shelf get one and move my tanks onto it when all glass on the tank breaks and they all fall. This is a new tank, less than a year old and a good brand. I put them in a bucket and bought them a new tank. I clean and add a new filter, a new heater and feed them good night. I wake up and all of their skin is falling off and they're half dead. If I emergency change the water, it does no good. Then my cats, gets cat fleas from where, I don't know where. He starts to retch and vomit and peeing blood. 
Half of my electrical appliances met their end in the last few days. I threw away so many things, it pains me. Things for my fish, extension cords, vacuums, my hair curler fizzled and burned. The heater on the tank stopped heating and instead sent electrical shocks. This all happens in a few days, after the hello and the dreams. You could say it's just bad luck and bugs, but it's too much at once and doesn't feel right. My dreams, they try to warn me. And this whole thing, there's something rhythmic tapping in the ceiling. No scurrying, AC heat off, no water damage. It knocks every hour or so. Sometimes it's short, sometimes it's long. It's always from the same spot. Sometimes there's a bang. That one happens in different spots, usually above my head. Sometimes I hear knocking at the door and when I go to answer, nobody is there. I keep seeing stuff out of the corner of my eye. No figure, just a shadow or a light moving across the room. It feels like large bugs are crawling under my skin all of the time I'm in the house and it burns, like I'm on fire. Although this could be because I'm on such high alert, I am so scared. This all happens in a few days. I left and went to my dad's for a few days because I couldn't take it anymore. I felt so good there. As soon as I come back and step foot inside the house, I just feel so much dread. I feel so much better as soon as I step outside. But one step inside, my stomach suddenly drops. What happened to the good vibes the first couple of weeks? It feels so dark and trapped in here. It used to feel so light and free. But the horrors never end. The pest people sprayed after I found the ants, but they found no large issues. They sprayed anyway because I needed it for peace. The spiders still haunt me. The holes scares me. The whispers, the dreams, the death of my fish. I love them so much. They find nothing in the attic. I make sure they check it many times. So why does the tapping not end? I sleep with all the lights on in this dreaded house to the sound of tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. Most often in bouts of nines and sevens. It's getting louder and louder. So my house has always had weird things happening. Kids looking upstairs and screaming and crying and refusing to go upstairs. People saying they've seen things on the landing or top of the stairs. Things in the bathroom falling at the same time every night. That sort of stuff. Two nights ago, my sister told me it felt like she was shaken awake. She was confused because her little boy was fast asleep next to her. She thought nothing of it and went to the toilet. I heard a banging noise like something had fallen or someone tripped. And then seconds later, I hear my sister run back into her room. I text her and asked if she fell and she said no. The noise came from her little boy's room, but he's fast asleep in her room. The light in the bathroom starts flickering and we hear nothing else out of the ordinary. But I then noticed my bedroom door open a crack, but I definitely closed it. I close it again, turn around in bed. My door is directly next to my bed. I start feeling a pressure on my back. I turn around to try and get comfortable and I notice my doors open again. I know it's not my sister playing pranks because I would have heard the floorboards creaking. Now my back is in absolute agony and my sleep paralysis started again the night after. I know I haven't slept funny because the ache and uncomfortable feeling on my back happened right after the noise happened and my door opened and I was laid in the same position I always am. Has anyone else had experiences like this? I also just want to add that the room where it happened, everyone hates sleeping in. My other sister used to hear voices and the doctors thought she was crazy. My cousin could never get sleep in there as he felt uneasy and his baby boy would never settle when he stayed. Now, my nephew struggles sleeping in there and says it's a scary mister. He's fine with autism. He doesn't understand how to lie about this stuff. It may just be a coincidence about my back and the sleep paralysis, but I don't know if I'm just curious to see if others have experienced something similar.